So we're now heading out to, a, to have a look at a horse that's got some vet diagnosed laminitis. Um, he gave me a call a little bit earlier and asked if I could drop in and have a look. And he's keen for some roller shoes or something like that to be put on the horse. So we'll head out there now. Uh, very hot today, over well over 30 degrees. Um, so we'll just cruise along today. We're not gonna do anything too strenuous and um, hopefully make this horse a little bit more comfortable. So we have completed our initial assessment on the feet. This includes photos, x-rays and visual assessment. So the vet diagnosis is mild laminitis. Laminitis is damage to the laminae between the hoof wall and the coffin bone. The lamina, or lamella, contacts the surface of the coffin bone and the inside of the hoof wall, connecting the two together. Depending on how severely these attachments are weakened by the laminitis, the outcome can range from mild foot soreness to separation of the coffin bone and hoof, which we call founder. If we look at this foot in x-ray, it's easy to see the distorted hoof wall. The laminitis has caused the laminae to lose integrity and the dorsal wall has somewhat separated from the coffin bone. This is further highlighted by the overlay. As we have decided to remove the distorted hoof, it's important to replace some of the structural integrity that has been taken from the hoof capsule. The red line in the overlay highlights the amount of dorsal wall we have removed, so we will be using hoof cast as a way to both create some of this structural integrity, and it will also allow us to nail, but not nail into inflamed laminae and weakened hoof wall. I first apply glue to the hoof capsule, ensuring I go right to the heels as this is generally the first point of failure due to expansion of the capsule. I place my cast in a bucket of water for about 10 seconds. Once removed, I squeeze the excess water from it, which also ensures the cast is wet all the way through. Once I begin applying my cast, I go for maximum thickness around the hoof, which is the reason that I don't wrap up and down the hoof wall. Once the cast has dried, I cut the back out of it to allow for expansion of the hoof. If this was a more severe case of laminitis, I would most likely leave the cast intact and protect the soft tissue in the back of the foot with dental impression material. I don't like the cast being too close to the coronary band, so I remove it ensuring I have a good amount of clearance. On this horse, we've decided to use a full roller shoe. The full roller shoe is a radial shoe placed on the foot with the center of rotation directly above the belly of the shoe. This shoe reduces load on the deep, deep digital flexor tendon, the toe, and as such, the laminae. It also eases the landing phase of the stride, which we often see exacerbated in laminitic horses. Some of the important aspects of the application of a full roller shoe are, center of rotation must be directly above the belly of the shoe. The shoe should be radial from front to back. I always use a wedge pad unless I'm dealing with a club foot. 
there should always be an air gap under the toe of the shoe. If this is not the case, you might need a higher grade roller and or more wedge. I always use the back nail holes, especially on a laminitic foot, as I do not want to compress the toe. I soften the toe and the heel of my foot to suit the radial shape of the shoe. I always use dental impression material to support the caudal aspect of the foot. Exactly. This was quite a nice application of a low grade roller shoe, which are a good option for mild to low grade chronic laminitic horses like this one. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.